A vapor compression refrigeration cycle is basically a four-step process in which heat is absorbed from a heat source, the evaporator, and transported to a heat sink, the condenser, where it is rejected from the cycle. Since the steps repeat, the cycle is a closed system, and it is designed to operate continuously. A refrigerant is used to transport the heat from the heat source to the heat sink. In a vapor compression refrigeration cycle, the component in which the refrigerant absorbs heat, is an evaporator. In the evaporator the refrigerant evaporates, and boils into a vapor. At the same time, the area around the evaporator is cool. The evaporator draws heat from its immediate surroundings. This heat is transferred to the refrigerant, because the temperature of the refrigerant, is lower than the temperature of the evaporator surroundings. To move the refrigerant through the cycle, energy must be added to it. A compressor is used to add energy to the refrigerant, so that it can move through the cycle. The compressor received the refrigerant vapor from the evaporator. Energy is added by squeezing or compressing the vapor into a relatively small space. This increases the vapor's pressure and temperature. The component in which the heat is rejected from the cycle, is a condenser. In the condenser the refrigerant vapor, is condensed back into a liquid. As the refrigerant flows through the condenser, it gives off heat. In a condenser cooling fluid, which is usually air or water, receives heat from the refrigerant. The refrigerant that condenses in the condenser collects in a receiver. The liquid refrigerant is stored there, until it flows into the expansion step of the cycle. The expansion step in this cycle, is carried out by a device called an expansion valve. The expansion valve controls the expansion of the refrigerant, and its flow to the evaporator. As the refrigerant passes through the expansion valve, it expands rapidly. This causes the pressure of the refrigerant to drop. The drop in pressure also causes the refrigerant's temperature to drop, so the fluid flowing into the evaporator is a low pressure, low temperature liquid. The temperature drop caused by the expansion valve, creates a larger temperature difference, between the refrigerant and the substance being cool. This allows more heat to be absorbed. Also at the lower pressure, the boiling temperature of the refrigerant is lowered. This means that the refrigerant is able to vaporize at a low temperature. In industrial facilities, refrigeration systems are often combined with other systems. A vapor compression refrigeration system, can be used with a secondary cooling system. Secondary cooling systems are used in many process industries. They remove heat from processes and equipment, and a refrigeration system in turn, removes the heat from the secondary cooling system. Secondary cooling systems typically use coolants, such as salt solutions, which are called brine or glycol solutions. Both of these types of solutions, have freezing points that are lower than the freezing point of water. This allows the secondary cooling system, to operate at lower temperatures than systems, that use water as a coolant. The system in this example, uses a brine solution. The brine flows through the process equipment, where it absorbs heat and cools the equipment. A pump is used to create flow through the brine cooling system. The brine is then pumped to a heat exchanger. The heat exchanger in the brine cooling system, is the evaporator in the refrigeration system. In the evaporator, the brine acts as the heat source, and its heat is absorbed by the refrigerant. As the refrigerant flows through the evaporator, it changes to a vapor. The refrigerant then flows on, through the rest of the refrigeration system. The cooled brine is directed back to the process equipment, and the cycle continues.